Hello learner, greetings of the day. Concept here in graphics called picking. So what is actually a picking means? Picking is something that you select. So here in OpenGL, picking is something like selecting an object from the display window. Suppose this is a screen and here on the screen I have a display window and here I display the graphics. Say the graphics that I display is triangle, circle or something like that. Okay. Now what is picking here? Picking is actually an operation, input operation itself. But here which you are performing, picking is performed using mouse click obviously because you use a mouse uh, to just uh, move over a particular uh, object and then click on a particular object that is how we pick any object right so here uh, mouse is required for performing this picking operation so here we call it as a picking itself is an input operation but when i use a mouse when i perform this mouse click event i don't want the f f uh, op position of the click there to be written as a measure but instead i want the id of the object which has been selected right so usually mouse we use for returning the position right so mouse whenever you move on any uh, pos I mean any on any um, you can say on any location you just move and just the moment you click and release that particular position will be returned as a measure x y that is x coordinate and y coordinate but here I don't want that x coordinate and y coordinate to be returned but instead I want the object id to be returned there right so how is that object id returned we will just see so you can just see here pointing device that is required for performing the speaking operation and that is mouse that we require so to return this object id when we perform picking operation so we have we will illustrate this with the help of an example So here uh, uh, we will just take an example of uh, uh, creating a picture in which one or more objects are changing or moving. So and thus their images must change. So what is it? We will create one picture say some picture and in that picture we will just create some object you can just see here an object that has been created in a picture and that object there it should move so that object should move so here which object should move here i have created a square inside a circle so that square should change or it should move so here that is how the images should change so we will see how to implement this let us take an example of a rotating square you can just see here a square is drawn and the four coordinates of the square I have taken by considering one object around the square. So what is that object I have drawn around the square? Say this is a 2D square and an object is around it. The square is bounded by a particular object and that object is sphere. You can just see this is a sphere and this is nothing but our square. You call this as a bounded sphere. Now this object square I want it to rotate. Okay this object square I want it to rotate. So how is it rotating by a particular position. So I will take this as a center of the square or center of the circle whatever you say. And about this position I am going to rotate or I am going to spin this square. So what exactly is spinning here? It is not the circle that spins here but this inner object square should spin continuously. So how do I perform the spinning of a square? Not the spinning of sphere but spinning of the square. So for that let us see first how to define the square. Okay. So let us take the four points of the square 
and you can just see here these four points of the square lies exactly on the circle so these are the four points on the circle so what are these four points on the circle how do i obtain you all know that there is a radius which is equidistant from the circle center of the circle to all the points on the circle circumference so here take a radius okay and then uh, you can just uh, draw a triangle there or by drawing a tangent you can just draw a tangent and then you can take one right angle triangle so here by drawing a right angle triangle okay you can just define an angle theta made by this radius okay and the point here on the circle you can just take this as an angle theta so always you know that adjacent side of the adjacent side here which is for called uh, which is nothing but the radius there so adjacent side is defined by cos theta and the opposite side is defined by sin theta right so let us take this as a center of the circle and the center of the circle here is defined by this such, such like a quadrant you can take it as a quadrant and you know this is our positive quadrant so this is our positive x axis positive y axis so this right angle triangle is exactly say this is actually exactly the center okay so this triangle is exactly in the positive quadrant where this is positive x axis and positive y axis so positive cos theta and positive sin theta i'm going to take this is sin theta okay i'm going to take here as the first point here on the circle okay and that is nothing but one of the point of our square let us move to the next one next point which is also a point on the circle the other point on the circle or square you can say so here also you can draw the same thing you can just draw a radius and here you can complete a right angle triangle okay you can just complete a right angle triangle there by drawing a tangent and that right angle triangle here you can make it as an angle theta there you can have a, an angle theta made by this triangle so again here when you take see here the x axis is negative whereas y axis is positive here right so here when i take the x axis in this i can take this as a opposite that is minus sin theta and then the adjacent side here you can take it as cos theta okay so that is along y you can take it as positive cos theta along x you can take it as minus sin theta whereas this particular position when you take this became a point which is in the opposite so here this is minus x axis and minus y axis so you can just take it as here minus cos theta comma sin theta here this axis this quadrant you can take it as sin theta that is positive sin theta and comma minus cos theta actually this has to be minus sin theta minus cos theta minus sin theta and whereas this one should be sin theta comma minus cos theta okay so these are the four points that we have on the circumference and these are the four points that we have on the uh, you can say that it makes up a square now what do i do next i have to now spin this square how do i make the square spinning i don't want the circle to spear spin here but instead i want the square to spin so for spinning the square i all that i have to do here is i have to shift the positions i have to shift the positions for the square now this square position this point should come over here shift here and this position should shift here this position you can see it should shift here if i have to rotate the square along clockwise direction and then this position should shift here so all the points should shift along one direction and that is a clockwise direction right so when i actually rotate the square in this direction what happens the point should change so in order to change the point what i have to do there i have to just increment the angle theta i have to orient the angle theta that's all i have to change the angle theta everywhere so by incrementing the angle theta there i can just shift the positions of the square so continuously if i go on incrementing this angle theta what happens to the points these points of the square will go on incrementing will go on shifting so as this points goes on shifting what happens the square will be redrawn at each stage 
after calculating four new set of points the square will be redrawn so uh, by continuously changing the angle theta continuously you are calculating four new positions and by doing this continuously you are redrawing the square and finally it looks as though the square is spinning so each time as you refresh the screen the new square will be drawn in the new position so Remi remember all the new position that you calculate will be exactly on the sphere itself so it looks as though now the square is spinning continuously by an angle theta so by by taking this fixed point that is center of the circle as uh, point of rotation okay fixed point of rotation by about that point your square starts spinning there right so how do we implement this in open gel we will just see We will directly go to the display function where we define the four coordinates for the square. So first you can just call the function gl clear. You can just pass the parameter gl color buffer bit to erase all the previous contents. Then you start with your gl begin polygon and here remember the theta value should be converted into radians. The value of the theta which is in degree divided by 2 pi by 360 you can do. Okay just you can convert this into radians and then here you can start drawing the vertex you can start drawing the vertex okay 2 pi by 360 or you can just take it as pi by 180 also to convert this theta value into radians okay the first vertex gl vertex 2 phi a to f that is cos theta sinus theta this is the first vertex that you're drawing for the square this is the second vertex minus uh, sin theta comma cos theta it's minus sin theta cos theta okay and then the third vertex is minus cos theta minus sin theta which comes in third quadrant and the fourth vertex is sin theta comma minus cos theta okay so these are the four vertices that you are drawing and that is how our polygon is ready or our square is ready now this is just to draw one square now how do i spin it For performing the spinning operation, let me call a function called glut idle function. I have already told about this glut idle function in the previous video. So whichever function call, whichever user defined function you have passed as a parameter, this function here, idle function will be called, called whenever you call this glut idle function. So when actually this glut idle function will be activated, when which, when, when uh, like uh, uh, during which event this function will be called is it when you click the mouse button this function is called no is it when you press a key on the keyboard you uh, this function is called no so it is not on such events this function is called this particular function idle function is called when your screen is idle that means when the user is not interacting with the graphics that means when the user is not clicking mouse or when the user is not uh, pressing any key when the screen is idle when the display window is idle this function idle is called okay so here you can see what you define within idle here this is left to you so whatever whatever i am defining here is just incrementing the angle theta so what angle theta is incremented there you know for shifting the square positions that is to make the square rotate i want the angle to change there right so how do i change i'll just increment the angle theta by 2 then uh, you can just see the angle can increment up to 360 degree it can go up to 360 degree what after 360 degree so after 360 degree it should start again from zero right so 360 degree degree will complete one full uh, rotation one full rotation is completed so after 360 degree again it should start from zero so what you can do there is theta minus 360 degree you can do if the angle exceeds 360 okay if the angle exceeds 360 you can subtract it from 360 again to start from zero so after incrementing the angle remember to call this glut post redisplay so what happens when you call this again your display function is called so you can go back and see what is there in your display function so it is actually it contains the code to draw the square so this time what is drawn this new square is drawn so this time the new angle theta is taken and as per that new angle theta the new coordinates are calculated for the square and now the square is redrawn so remember the first function in the display is called is which function gl clear function so what is that gl clear for for erasing the old square this gl clear is called 
in the display function you can go and see in the display first function is real clear and that function actually erases the old square and the new coordinates for the square is taken and the new square is drawn so each time you can see the old square is uh, erased and the new square is drawn as per the incremented angle theta okay and this idle function is called continuously until the user doesn't interact until the user you can say until the user presses the mouse button or presses the key until then this function will be called that means until then the square will continue to spin there now you can see you can make use of a mouse function there so what is this mouse function so mouse function uh, uh, you can use it is left to you now when you press the left button say uh, your uh, idle function can be called so that means what uh, the moment you press a mouse button left button you can make the uh, square to rotate there by calling this idle function then you can assign one more option for that what that is for middle button you can assign an action so when you press the middle button you should call null null means what you should not call any function that means only a square should be drawn only your display function will be called that means only the square is still square your square will stop spinning so that means your square is only drawn in this stage okay right so this is actually your mouse function so this is how you can interact even through the mouse so this is actually about the picking so here you define an object draw an image inside an object so you make just that image rotate there not the outside circle it's only the inside square you make it spinning right so this is a simple example for picking